Have you ever seen someone try to reinvent themselves? Maybe with a new way of dressing or a different way to act? Well, the Bible talks about being new humans. Stick around, I'll tell you all about it. We all know those people that want to change themselves to fit the environment or to get a fresh start in a new job or a new school. In the end, they always end up letting the real them out and eventually they relax. Well, in Ephesians, Paul tells us all about God's grace and how it allows man to change and become new humans with new tasks and focus. See, in the first part of Ephesians chapter 2, Paul notes that believers were dead in their sins before finding life through Christ. They were buried in a grave of deception, sin, selfishness, adultery, or just not having a purpose in life. And then enter God. His grace saved those souls and they were reborn in him. Now, this isn't a real walking dead sort of situation, but the illustration is pretty stark in the contrast between dead and alive when it comes to the unsaved and the saved. And let me tell you, once you experience Christ, you don't go back. In fact, on a recent trip, Pastor Vaughn and I took Pastor Jeremy to his first experience at the Mecca of Interstate Stops, Bucky's. He'd never been. So he made sure he got some brisket, got some jerky, some candied cashews, and even experienced some of the best bathrooms you'll find off of an exit. And as he admitted that the brisket breakfast taco he was eating was really, really good, I told him that I hoped he enjoyed life after visiting Bucky's because now he cannot go back to life before it. He just can't go back to not knowing what the food is like or what a wall of jerky looks like in person. He can't go back to ignorance. And maybe it, that's kind of a trivial example, but the concept is the same. Once you've experienced God's grace and what that feels like, you can't go back. You're alive in God. Nothing you did made that happen. It was all God. Now, chapter 2 in Ephesians goes on to talk about unity in the body of Christ and how Gentiles were once separated from Christ. Yet in chapter 2, verse 13, it says that but now in, G in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. The rope had been dropped and all were allowed into the family. Reconciliation had occurred through Jesus. And now we have one foundation of the church and Jesus is the cornerstone. Verse 22 says, in him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the spirit. You can't build a house without walls, but you also can't build it without windows. Legally, you have to have at least one window, I think, for occupancy or something. I don't know. So where does this leave us as believers? Well, through God, we get salvation. This is not something that we did, so stop with all the victory laps. This is all on the Father. This also means that we're connected, all of us, in the same family. The old covenant has been let go and a new one is in its place. We're no longer strangers and aliens from the family, but united as believers in Christ. We're all together in this family. And like families, sometimes we'll fight and sometimes we'll get angry, but we are all together. We're not alone. You're not alone. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for the blessings. We thank you for being raised and accepted into your family. We know we do not deserve the grace that you have bestowed on us, but that you also give it freely to us. Help us to live into your will and into the new purpose that we have as new humans in Christ. Help us to see that we have a focus for our lives and that we're free of the bonds that come with not knowing you. Help us to be more true to you. In your name, Father. Amen. Grace, what have you done? Murdered for me on that cross. Accused in absence of wrong. My sin washed away. Too much to make sense of it. I know that your love breaks my fall. 
the scandal of grace you died in my place with my soul did live oh to be like I give all I have just to know Jesus there's no one beside you forever the hope Death, where is your sting? Your power is as dead as my sin. The cross has taught me to live. Mercy, my heart, and I've the sin. The day and its trouble shall come. But I know that your strength is enough. The scandal of grace, you died in my place, so my soul will live. Oh, to be like I give all I have just to know. Jesus, there's no one beside you. Never the to be like I give all I have just to know Jesus there's no one beside you forever the hope in my heart and it's all because of you Jesus it's all because of you, Jesus, it's all because of your love that my soul will live. And it's all because of you, Jesus, it's all because of you, Jesus, it's all because of your love that my soul all I have just to know Jesus there's no one beside